Hi everyone. I hope that you're doing good and um, have had a great day. Um, I have been wanting to talk to you guys about the Okmulgee um, missing men, right? There's four men that are missing out of Okmulgee. And um, it's going on at least three days now that they've been missing. Um, <clears throat> so I want to start from the very beginning and tell you what the police have said, right? So three days ago, they said four men have been reported missing to the Okmulgee Police Department overnight. Mark Chastain, 32, of Okmulgee, Billy Chastain, 30, of Okmulgee, and Lake Sparks, 32, of Okmulgee, were reported missing by Mark Chastain's wife. A few hours later, Alex Stevens, 29, of Okmulgee, was reported missing by his mother. All four are close friends and are believed to have left Billy Chastain's home on the west side of Okmulgee on Sunday at around 8 p.m. All were reported on bicycles. Two of the men are believed to have cell phones with them, but attempts to call go straight to voicemail. Investigators have spent the day conducting interviews with potential witnesses. A sighting of Stephen was reported at the smoke shop on the south side of Okmulgee on Sunday around 4 p.m. He was reported by, reportedly by himself, a sighting of both Chastain men were reported to have occurred on Monday morning by a passerby near the YMCA. Investigators are reporting, are working to try and confirm the sightings, but currently have only witness descriptions. Mark Chastain's phone was tracked to an area south of Okmulgee, but was turned off or lost power. Officers have checked that area and found no sign of any of the men, although there is no evidence to indicate violence uh, or foul play at this point, a small contingent from the District 25 Violent Crime Task Force is assisting, which allows us to bring more resources to bear in the search. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Okmulgee Police Department. You can search us uh, or reach us by phone, Facebook, email at uh, police, re police report at OKM city.net and these are their pictures so you've got Billy on the left Mikkel bottom which I don't even remember saying a Mikkel name um, I said a mark um, marks right up here in the center <clears throat> did I say a Mikkel and not remember saying that I said a mic said like um, but and then there's they say Alex over here and they put Alex Ray so there are their pictures um let me take you back out of this and relocate to where we need to be um okay so this was the initial one and then there was this update per the chief task force and investigators have met. These men are exhausted. I am sending them home to get rested and we will start fresh tomorrow unless something time sensitive comes in overnight. I do not plan to give any additional updates until tomorrow. And that was two days ago. A day ago. Update from Chief Prentice, and they that was the 13th. <clears throat> they have uh, there have been some questions about additional searches today. We have no new information to base an organized search on today. We will focus on collecting and reviewing video surveillance from the past. We believe they traveled and follow up reports of sightings today. Any new updates will be passed along as they become available. And then a day ago, update on the four missing men from Chief Prentice. Investigators spent the day gathering video and additional GPS information. They also followed up on potential sightings. We were unable to confirm any reported sightings. An interview was conducted today regarding a report that a citizen observed all four men 
walking down the street around 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning. This also cannot be confirmed with independent witnesses or video. This evening and tomorrow, we will begin the long and tedious process of sifting through the hours of video as well as the GPS data. Additional locations have been identified identified as potential sources for more video, and they will be contacted tomorrow. Search warrants have been submitted for phone records and warrants for Facebook accounts will be forthcoming. It is important to remember that without an actual appearance of the missing men on video along the path, we have been able to establish by phone data, we cannot definitively say that the missing men took that path. Rather, only one of their phones did. We will continue to investigate and are following any evidence we uncover. Additional updates will be sent as available. And that makes perfect sense. So I, I'm glad they're, you know, I'm glad that they recognize that. <clears throat> um, five hours ago, latest update from Chief Prentice, task force officers continue to investigate today. A more comprehensive update will be sent at the end of the day today. And here is a video I'm going to show you, and then we'll come back over here again. So let me show you the video from today. Families of four missing men in Okmulgee are pleading with them to either come home or anyone with no, who knows anything to contact police tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shay Rossi. And I'm Sarah Whaley. We've been telling you about this story for the last 24 hours. Now, these men have now been missing, police say, for about three days. They mm -hmm. haven't been heard from in about three days. So yeah, since Sunday. We are so glad you're with us tonight. Let's go ahead and get out to Fox 23's Amy Heibel. She is live in Okmulgee for us tonight. She has Okmulgee Police Chief Joe Prentice with her. Amy. That's right. Joe Prentice joins us live. He's kind enough to talk with us. They just wrapped up their search. Uh, where are you at in this investigation? What did you find out here today at the uh, salvage yard? We've been here since about 9 30, 10 o'clock this morning, and we've covered about 25 acres of ground on foot and with search and rescue dogs. We have come up with nothing remarkable, so we are moving on and uh, going to follow other leads. Do you believe fall play may be involved? Uh, they haven't been seen or heard from since Sunday evening. What are your thoughts on that at this point in the investigation, Chief? The longer that they're missing, the more concerned I am. However, and, and I don't want to discount the possibility, but at this point, we don't have any evidence other than the fact that they're missing to indicate that there may be foul play involved. What are you asking for from the public? I know you've gotten uh, numerous tips, but the issue is what uh, trying to confirm that information and matching it up with evidence. What do you need from the public at this point in your investigation? Anyone that has information regarding the whereabouts of these individuals, if they believe they've spotted them, contact the Oatmuggy Police Department. What's the next step forward? I know you're wrapping up out here. You're getting ready to leave. Where do we go from here? Our task force will be meeting in the next little bit, and we will discuss what tips we've had up to now, what came in today while we were out here. We'll prioritize those pieces of information and then make assignments to follow them up. Okay, and why the salvage yard? Tell me the importance of this particular location. What brought you out here? The one of the, the missing men has an app on his phone that tracks his GPS. His last location was known to be or believed to be at this salvage yard. Okay, all right. Um, again, do you know why they may have been out here? I understand they were on bicycles. Were they perhaps looking for scrap metal? For their, I, I understand that Billy is quite an enthusiast when it comes to bicycles. Do you know why they would have been attracted to, you know, a salvage yard? At this point, anything I would say on that subject would be pure speculation. I, I have no idea. Okay. How cooperative has the owner of the salvage uh, yard been? Um, he has been very cooperative. He has submitted to an interview. He gave us permission to conduct uh, the search both with the animals and on foot today. And you've been talking constantly with the family members. How are they holding up at this time? Well, obviously they're upset. Um, I would say even borderline distraught which is understandable, but I, I want them to know that we're going to keep looking until we find them. All right, very good. Thank you so much for your time. We certainly appreciate it. We'll hear more from the families coming up tonight at 6, reporting live in Okmulgee. Amy Hybels, Fox 23 News. Yeah, so 
Um, I'll take you off that. And the next post on their Facebook was that there will be a press conference held at the police department and no other information will be released outside of the press conference. And so I'm going to take you guys to the press conference right now so that you can get the update. Hey, All right, you want my name and spelling or? Yes, sir. Joe Prentice, J-O-E-P-R-E-N-T-I-C-E. I am police chief for the city of Oatmulgee. With me at the back of the room is Carol Iskey. She is our district attorney. At around 1349 hours this afternoon, dispatch received a report of suspicious items in the river in the area of the bridge that goes across Sharp Road, which is located southwest of Oatmulgee. Officers responded and discovered what appears to be multiple human remains in the river. Multiple agencies are responding and will work to begin the recovery process. This process will take time and currently we have more questions than answers. The families of Mark Chastain, Billy Chastain, Mike Sparks and Alex Stevens have been notified of the, of the discovery. At this time, we cannot make an identification, but out of respect, we let the families know before it was officially announced. If it turns out that these four missing men um, are the remains in the river, then the focus of our investigation will shift from finding them to what happened to them. If it is determined it is not them, then we will have a separate investigation. Um, that is the conclusion of my statement, and I will answer questions if you have any. How many, like how much, human remains have you found? I can tell you that there are multiple, but I can't see everything. And all of it is in the river itself. So until we have searched the entire area and got everything that we can see out and made sure there's nothing else, I can't give you a definitive answer. But there are multiple objects in the water that appear to be human remains. Like bodies or parts? Well, I can't see everything. Um, there are, there is definitely what appears to be um, body parts protruding from the water. I can't tell you what's under the water. Are they in a vehicle or? No. And do we have a team out there right now trying to retrieve those? There are multiple agencies on scene right now that will begin by documenting the scene by um, aerial footage then they will photograph the scene. Um, they will approach each object individually, photograph it close up, and then start the recovery process. And are those agencies OSBI, FBI? Um, the District 25 Violent Crime Task Force is on scene and is leading the investigation. And eight, uh, officers from the Omagi Police Department, Omagi County Sheriff's Office, and the District Attorney's Office, as well as um, some officers from Light Horse Police are out there. Oh, OSBI has provided two crime scene agents and the medical examiner's forensic anthropologist is on their way and may be on scene by now. And how are these parts discovered? I beg your pardon? How are these parts discovered? A passerby saw something that looked suspicious in the water and called dispatch. Is this in any way uh, related to any of the locations that family believed um, that they had previously been seen? I am not aware of this particular location being mentioned by family. There were multiple locations that the family did mention. I'm not aware of this being one of them. Any injuries visible on the remains? I, gunshots? Or... I can't tell. And it was just the passerby that indicated these might be human remains? I have not talked to that individual. My understanding is the passerby saw something in the water that he thought was suspicious and felt compelled to report it. So as of right now, the bodies have not yet been recovered from the body of water? No, they are still in the river. And they will be in the river for some time. It'll, it'll take some time to do the recovery. We have to be very, very meticulous. Do we know if the passerby happened to know any of the family members or potentially the people whose remains these might belong to? I don't know. I, I, have, I, I don't have an answer to that question. You said this entire time you don't say there's foul play involved until you have evidence. Is this evidence of foul play? This this is what I would I would call evidence that there's potentially foul play involved. But 
I need to be clear. We don't know that this is our missing men yet. So, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm clear about that. Until we do, I can't tell you that they met with foul play. Are the remains in close proximity to one another? Um, probably a maximum of 75 yards total. And I know you said it was hard for you to see everything, but does it seem like it's multiple people remains? More than one person? Uh, yes. Are they clothed? It's hard to tell. I think so. Does it seem like four people to you? I can't see enough of it to tell you for sure. Any sign of the bicycles where the men were last seen? Um, I was out there for a fair length of time. I did not see any bicycles. Before this discovery, did you all find anything on the surveillance footage you were going through today? We, we've we been going through surveillance video for multiple days. And as I'm sure you know already know, that's a very, very tedious process. And we did not find any images of our missing men on any of the surveillance we've gone through up to now. Was this an area that you guys were considering searching prior to this? All of the information that we had up to this point indicated that um, our missing men, based on telephone data, had gone east um, leaving town and then ultimately south on 75. This is in the opposite direction. So no, we never considered this as a search area. And are the bodies, I mean, can you tell if any, there's any trauma in the sense of are they just laying there or are they in a bag or anything that would denote somebody might have done, you know, put them there? I can't see any bags, but you have to understand they're, they're partially submerged in the river. You can see portions of what appears to be a body. And again, I want to be clear. Based on my training and experience, it looks like these are human bodies. Until I get people out to them, I can't 100% confirm that. And part of the reason for that is everything is partially submerged and you can't see very much of it. It looks like they're clothed, but I can't confirm that. And I don't see any evidence of a plastic bag, but, or any other type of bag, but you know, I, I, I can't tell you definitively. And since we haven't positively ID'd these bodies as our missing men, does the search continue for them or is it suspended? Well, I guess the best way to explain that is we, we would take leads as they come in and we follow them up. This is going to occupy a large portion of our time right now, which is going to slow us down. We're not stopping anything completely until we know that these men are found. But I have to dedicate resources to this. So I'm, some of my people that were involved in the review of video and whatnot will be doing this. There had been speculation of reported sightings. Did we ever find out whether that was true or if they were really last seen and heard from on Sunday? The only thing that I can confirm definitively is that they were last, Mark Chastain was last spoken to on the phone shortly after 5 p.m. on Sunday. Four, possibly as many as six individuals left the residence, but the time that stated by the neighbor is off based on the phone data. Beyond that, I can't confirm anything. We have had many, many, many reports of sightings. We haven't been able to confirm any of them. I had one today that was in Monroe, Louisiana. So. And when you say that they had left the residence, which residence have they left? There, there is a residence that is um, associated with Billy Chastain. He stayed there, but I don't know that he lived there full time. And it is on West 6th Street. They left that residence, um, presumably together. And that's all we know. Everything else, all the other information that we have that we can confirm is based on cell phone data. So I can tell you where Mark Chastain's cell phone went, and but I can't tell you definitively whether he had it at the time. And this is Deep Fork River? Yes, ma'am. And you said uh, possibly six individuals maybe left that house. Um, do you have any idea who the other two might be? I, I can't tell you for sure that there were six. And if there were, I have no idea who the other two would be. And aside from the bodies, any other items near these remains? Not that I can see and identify, no.
there's some debris out there that you expect to find on the riverbank, but you know, beer cans and things like that. But I can't tell you if any of it is is related. And is it close to a road or a bridge or kind of out to that? It, it is immediately adjacent to a bridge. You, the the objects can be seen standing on the bridge. Is there, is there a diving team out there? I assume you're working pretty hard to preserve the evidence. Um, we have requested Oklahoma Highway Patrol's boat team to assist with recovery. Um, I haven't. I haven't been on scene since I sent the email out for this press conference, but I can tell you that based on what I saw out there, I don't think the river's deep enough to need a diver. I was just wondering why you, why did you notify the family when you aren't able to identify uh, if there are even bodies out there? The natural conclusion, um, once the information gets out on social media or announced to the news by the family would be that their loved ones have been found deceased. And I didn't want them to hear that from the news. I wanted them to hear it from me. And I've, I've made it clear to them that I cannot tell them definitively with whether this is their loved ones. How long will teams be out there working on this event? Until we're finished, I'd say sometime tomorrow. And based on the locations of the remains, does it appear that they were thrown into the river from the bridge? Anything I provide you with that would be pure speculation. I, I, I don't know. And when you say until tomorrow, are they going to be working through the night? That decision will be made sometime tonight, and I think it will probably depend on how much available light and how much artificial light we can get to where we need it. Um, some of the objects are very close to the bridge, which should be not much of a challenge to get light to it. Others are further away and the terrain's fairly rugged. That I think that'd be pretty difficult. So if we have to suspend the recovery effort tonight, we will keep security personnel out there until tomorrow where we can restart the process. What, when you mentioned that now you guys have a reason to believe there may be foul play, what leads you to believe that? Well, the fact that I believe there are bodies in the river is the only reason at this point. Um, once I know the identity of those bodies, I'll have you a firmer answer. Is that bridge closed off or what's the access to the, the area right the now? The road is closed for a, a long distance in both directions. This has been a really long week for you guys. Can you just uh, speak to what this development means for your department in this case? Well, I'd like to say it means rest, but I think that's going to be a while. Um, it, it, does, it does come with... I don't want to say relief, but it, it takes some of the pressure of finding these men, assuming that this, well, that's who we're talking about off of us so we can shift gears and, and find out what happened to them. Um, if it's not them, then we're right back to square one and we'll be operating two investigations at the same time. Once the bodies are pulled from the river, how long do you think it would take the um, medical examiner to give you guys an ID? Um, I would defer to the medical examiner's office with that question, but I, I think that logically that will depend on what their workload is like and um, how difficult the process is going to be. They're usually pretty quick at it, though. And what was the total of how many remains, how many bodies? I don't know. I won't know till we get them all recovered. And once I have that information, I'll email out an update with as much as I can give you. Now, how do you found them in a body of water? How you, met, you were mentioning earlier that you guys have to be very meticulous. Um, can you explain a little bit of why that is? Well, we're meticulous at every crime scene, but when when you have water, spotting evidence is much more difficult. So the evidence search process in the immediate area of anything, any item of evidence that you do find, and in this case, we're talking about human remains, you have to be extra meticulous. You have to go that extra step to make sure you don't miss anything. Anything else that we didn't ask you that you would like to ask? Oh, good Lord, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> What's your message to the families? Um, we're not giving up. If, this is, if these are your loved ones, all we're doing is switching focus. And we're going to work just as hard to find out what happened to them as we did trying to find them. And to if foul play is involved, don't give any message to the perpetrator or perpetrators out there. I'll tell him when I see him. Anything else? All right. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You.
so that was the press conference. <clears throat> it was pretty, wow, that, that's a lot of detail. Um, for not being able to give up information, I still think that he provided um, enough. It's pretty, like, I, I personally think that somebody possibly tried to weigh down some of the parts, maybe, and because it's so shallow, it only weighed down where they tied it to one side of the part and the other side was able to come up possibly maybe i don't know that's kind of what it sounded like there are there is definitely what appears to be um body parts protruding from the water we're following breaking news out of Okmulgee. Multiple human remains have been found in the Deep Fork River, located not far from where four Okmulgee men have been missing since Sunday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rick Marinon. Shay and Sarah both have the night off. Okmulgee Police Chief Joe Prentice held a news conference just minutes ago and updated us on the gruesome discovery made in a river while searching for these four men who disappeared earlier this week. Now, we do want to be clear. The search for these men is not over. It's not even suspended. On your screen now is a map of where the bodies were found in relation to the city of Okmulgee. This is in rural Okmulgee County, southwest of town, almost closer to the community of Schulter. We have team coverage for you both at the Okmulgee Police Headquarters and at the scene where it appears the body parts are visible from the water. We begin with Fox 23's Abigail Dye, who spoke with the police chief about the discovery. She's live at the department now. Rick, it was just within the past hour that the police chief told us about this discovery. And of course, it's a really big one. It's been a really long week here for the police working this case. And like you said, just to reiterate, these remains have not been identified. But the police chief did say it seems like these remains do belong to more than one person. And they haven't identified these remains. Like I said, they haven't even pulled them out of the river where they were spotted at this point. But of course, everyone's worry at this point and everyone's speculation is that it very well may be one of these four men who have been missing from Okmulgee that we told you about all week. We'll put those men on the screen right now for you to see. It is Mark and Billy Chastain, Alex Stevens, and Mike Sparks. All four of these men haven't been seen or heard from since Sunday. Police and the families have been searching for the men all week. Now, we have had a few sightings, and those have been reported, but there has been no concrete developments in this case, of course, until today. Okmulgee Police Chief Joe Prentice says they went ahead and notified the families of the missing once these remains were spotted. Multiple agencies are responding and will work to begin the recovery process. This process will take time and currently we have more questions than answers. The families of Mark Chastain, Billy Chastain, Mike Sparks and Alex Stevens have been notified of the, of the discovery. At this time, we cannot make an identification, but out of respect, we let the families know before it was officially announced. If it turns out that these four missing men um, are the remains in the river, then the focus of our investigation will shift from finding them to what happened to them. If it is determined it is not them, then we will have a separate investigation. Now, police are working to identify those remains right now. We have been told that OSBI is now on this case. They're working with the medical examiner, the district, uh, the district attorney, and a dive team to try and pull the remains out of the river at this point to identify them and multiple agencies are working this case this is a huge development at this time for police but like you heard the chief just say they are not suspending the search for these four men most of their manpower will be focused on trying to recover and identify these remains at this point but the search for these four men is still considered active at this time live cover news that matters i'm abigail dive fox 23 news And I just want to take you over to their picture. Um, so this is um, Billy on the left, Mike on the right. And I'm going to zoom in 
so that you can see a little bit better. All right. So Billy, this is Billy. Just by chance that it ends up not being them or if it is them, right? And then coming over here, this is the one that they were calling Mike. Um, it's been spelled, could be Michael too, who that's spelling. But, and then we will go down. And I will get you his name. Let me get you. So this one's Mark, um, Jesse. He has beautiful eyes, in my opinion. <laughs> and then um, this is Alex here. So um, I will update you guys and let you know what they um, when they put out an email determining if or you know basically how many total is I guess going to be the next email that gets put out. So I will update you guys on that um, with how many exactly. And then, I mean, if it ends up being four, I would just kind of look in even more like it, right? But um, I will let you guys know the update when they put one out. I hope that you all have a good night. Thank you for listening. I greatly appreciate it. Take care, everybody.